So, in this video, I'll introduce some physicalist responses to the criticisms we met in part one. That is, reasons as to why, despite the fervour of some in this forum, physicalism may nevertheless be true. <laughs> Last time we heard how first-person phenomenal qualities, or qualia, supposedly refute the idea that things are essentially physical, either by opening up explanatory gaps in or by denying knowledge to physicalist thinking. Although one wouldn't necessarily know it if one were only conscious of the ramblings of certain apologists on YouTube, there's actually a wealth of replies, of physicalist replies to this criticism in the philosophical literature. Dan Dennett, for example, suggests that there's really nothing to explain, and that empirical research into features of consciousness that are not considered problematic for physicalists will, when properly understood, yield adequate explanations of those that, well, are. Similarly, Paul Churchland presents historical examples wherein prima facie non-physical phenomena were eventually explained in terms of underlying physical processes. He argues that there is no reason why this could not, in principle, happen to consciousness. Ned Block and Rob Stalnacker, meanwhile, argue that high-level concepts like qualia need not be identified with low-level physical concepts in order to be physically explained. Thus, other forms of physicalist reduction, largely ignored by anti-physicalists, may suffice to explain consciousness. These responses suggest that the explanatory gap which supposedly refutes physicalism is either illusory or a bridgeable hostage to fortune. With regards to anti-physicalist appeals to knowledge, David Lewis suggests that qualia only entitle us to claim that we know how to do something, rather than we know that something is true. Brian Loire, meanwhile, argues that any factual knowledge provided by qualia only marks out a gap between the conceptually physical and the conceptually mental, not between physical and mental properties. Daniel Stoljar, on the other hand, argues that whilst qualia provide theoretical knowledge, Physicalism requires knowledge of physical things. Knowledge of physical things, he argues, does not depend on qualia. This range of responses to the knowledge problem suggests that qualia don't contribute to any foundational form of knowledge that's occult to the physicalist. That is, they defend physicalism from the charge that it is so seriously flawed, epistemically speaking, that it must be rejected. We also heard last time how mental states have the property of intentionality, whereby they are about other things, other things that may or may not exist, be subjects of statements that may or may not be true, or have names that may or may not refer to them. We heard how, between them, Brentano and Chisholm claim that this peculiar property of aboutness is both necessary and sufficient for anything's being mental, and that nothing physical can have it, and that the mental is therefore irreducible to the physical. Well-known physicalist responses to this argument, which YouTube apologists only ever seem to touch upon in order to misrepresent, include the eliminative materialism of Paul and Pat Churchland, in which intentional things are fictions like deposits of failed empirical theories, the instrumentalism of Dan Dennett, in which intentional things are tools that help us predict certain objective patterns of behaviour, um, the informational theoretics of Fred Dredsky, in which intentionality is grounded in the causal relations of physical systems. The telesemantics of Ruth Millikan, in which intentionality is grounded in the evolutionary function of cognitive systems. And the semantic inferentialism of Bob Brandon, in which intentionality is grounded in inferential roles. Individually and collectively... Physicalist responses such as these amount to an argument contra Brentano that intentionality is insufficient for mentality. What they conclude instead is that intentionality is merely an existential property, one which supervenes upon arrangements of proto and non-intentional things. Things that are essentially physical, but which have evolved to have intentionality. 
Thus it remains possible, despite the intentionality of mental states, that at the most fundamental level of existence, the things which exist are those which physicists talk about. In other words, that physicalism may be true. Finally, in episode 1 we heard claims that the necessity of mental states for physical elements, as suggested by quantum and digital physics, entails the falsehood of physicalism. One response to this is to point out that the majority of interpretations of the experimental data are realistic. It certainly doesn't follow from there being about four suitably idealistic interpretations out of a dozen or so plausible ones, that physicalism is in principle false. Even with regards to the account of the Copenhagen interpretation, that is clearly idealistic, there's an interesting background story as to how it, rather than Bohr's, eventually became accepted. Nor does it follow, especially given physicalist replies to criticisms regarding intentionality, that if physical existence is explained in terms of information, that information is in its essence intentional, at least not intentional in the way that only mental things are supposed to be. It is possible then that the programming, in as much as it is such, of the physical universe requires no programmer. All in all then, and despite what one may have thought if you once listened to the vociferous anti-physicalist bandwagon here on YouTube, there's no uncontested reason to claim that physicalism is dead, although the debate has moved on, with new rejoinders from anti-physicalists and new responses to those from physicalists, it's still pretty much drawn up along these lines. This situation raises the issue of the honesty of these self-appointed YouTube experts who adamantly proclaim that physicalism is dead. In the next and final episode of this series, I'll address that issue. Thank you for listening.